Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna dive into matrix operations here. So completely new here for this R series here, we're gonna start with matrices. So let's just start off here with, you know, basic matrix operations. And, you know, let's just start off here by creating a few matrices. So we'll create this first one called A, and we'll create the matrix using the matrix function as we saw in the previous video. And I'm gonna use an enter here just because I like to keep track of these as I mentally kind of build these out, but it's up to you how you do it. Just don't forget to add the commas and the correct spaces. Okay, and now we're gonna create a matrix called B. Okay, and let's just run these real quick. So we'll run matrix A, matrix B, and then we're gonna learn here matrix addition. So matrix addition is pretty straightforward here. We can just set, you know, C, which is gonna be our, you know, new calculation here. And literally all you type is going to be A plus B. And we can run that. And then we'll print out C. So A is going to give us, you know, 3, 1, 5, 8, 1, 5, as we saw. B is going to give us 5, 2, 9, and so forth. Uh, if we add these together, though, you can see that the first column in the first row is going to be 5 plus 3. So we should end up with 8. And let's just go down this column here. And if we have, you know, 1 plus 2, we should end up with 3. And then of course, if you have five plus nine, we end up with 14 and so on and so forth here. So adding matrices is really just as easy as this code here. You have two matrices, they have to be the same size and you just do A plus B. In this case, A matrix plus B matrix gives us C matrix. Okay, and next we're gonna do a you know simple scalar of a matrix. And this works exactly as you'd probably expect here. So we're just gonna take the C matrix and we're gonna scale it by value of five. We'll run that. We'll print that out real quick. And as you can see, right, eight times five is 40, three times five is 15, 14 times five is going to be 70. So scaling matrices, just as easy as adding them. But now let's look at something, you know, a little bit more complicated. Let's look at uh, doing matrix multiplication. And more specifically, I think it's called the dot product. You want to get into math terms, technically speaking. And so to do this, I need to make a new matrix. So we'll create two new matrices. And in this case, we'll call them X and Y. So let me just create the X matrix real quick here. Okay, and we're going to create a three row by five column matrix. And it'll look like this. So a little bit different than the way I typed it out by hand, but it will give you a uh, three by five, and this is important here for doing uh, matrix multiplication. So we'll note, you know, three by five. And then next we'll create the Y matrix quickly, which will be, you know, Y matrix. And we're gonna have an in row of five, which means we'll have a number of columns equal to two. Again, guys, just a quick note here, right? When I put these in here, these are actually going to be columns, not rows. I just like to do this so I can mentally know I have the correct number of digits or integers uh, to put into the matrix. So I'll end up with the correct dimensions here. So that's really why I'm doing that. And we'll run that and then we'll print out Y so you can see that. Okay, and this is going to be, as I said before, a five by two. And if we remember school uh, for matrix multiplication, it needs to have the inner values be the same. So what I mean by this is we're going to have a, I'll put this in square brackets, a three by five. And this is going to be multiplied by a five by two. So the inner pieces here uh, need to both be the same number. It's going to be five here. Uh, if again, if you flopped them the other way around, the inner pieces would be two and three, so you can't multiply them that way. And this is going to give us the outer values for dimensions. So it should give us a three by two matrix here. And to do this, we're gonna create Z. And all you need to do is do X, then you do percentage sign, multiplication, which is the star, percentage sign again, and then do Y. And this is how you do matrix multiplication. And you run this, and this gives us Z, and we print this, 
and this is going to give us, as I mentioned, a three by two. So three rows by two columns it does give us three by two, and that is the correct answer. So this has been fine and dandy, and this has been Matrix, and people are going to ask, you know, you know, Dimitri, what is a real world application of this? Like, this just seems like we're just writing code and doing nonsensical math here. So let's do a little bit of a quant finance example. Um, steady state Markovs, these can be used in a very, I don't know, all kinds of applications from biology to quantitative finance, uh, but they do use matrix multiplication to make the calculations quite easy. Um, again, I'm not here to teach you guys uh, probability theory and matrix multiplication and quant finance with Markov chains, but we're going to do something kind of interesting here. So if a Markov chain is stationary, so this means that it's going to be a steady state. Again, stationarity, stationarity, stationarity. I'll put some links maybe above or below if you want to know more about statistical theory on stationarity. Uh, it will have the following properties. So V is going to be this kind of matrix state here. And if we do V times P, where P is going to be the transition matrix. So I'll put this here where P is the transition. Uh, what this is really saying is that P is a transition matrix. V is going to be the initial state. So I guess I should put that here too. So what this is really saying is that you'll have some initial state that you start at here in probability theory. And then P is going to be this transition matrix, meaning these are the probabilities that we move between different states within a Markov chain here. So I know this is kind of hard if I don't have a diagram or graph here, but just bear with me here. Maybe I'll put some things on the screen. But what happens is that we imply that if this is a steady state, when we multiply this, no matter where we start, when we multiply that starting point by the transitions, we'll end up at the same steady state. So this will converge um, to V. Now you can actually do the hand math on these, um, but one kind of handy quick tool is basically if you just iterate this process and you have V, which is our initial state, and then we just multiply that and we keep doing that over and over again, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, the numbers will converge because it's steady state. If it's not a steady state, it will keep going and changing. We won't end up with a steady state here. So I'll make the note here, right? You really should do the math. Programming is not an excuse um, for not learning, you know, more theoretical things or mathematical. I find a lot of people get lazy when they start to learn to program. So we'll put that note there. So raising P to a large value will converge in a steady state. And so a quick example of this is going to be V, which is going to be that initial state here. And we're gonna create a matrix just as we've been talking about. And we're gonna set this to 20%, so 0.2 and 80%. So these have to add up to one to be a Markov here with probability theory because our probabilities need to add to one. And we're gonna have our in rows equal one and our in columns equal two. We'll run that and I can print that out if you're curious what that looks like. And then we're going to have P, which is going to be another matrix, which we need to cal calculate or design here, I guess. And this is going to be 0.1, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.90, and 0 0.75. And in rows are going to be equal to 2. And in columns are also going to be equal to 2. And we'll run that and we'll print this. And again, you'll notice if you add up the rows here, um, that equals one. If you add these ones up, they equal one because of probabilities. And finally here, um, you could use a function to raise a matrix here uh, to a power, uh, that, but it's not built into R. So it's not part of the base language here, but you could use something like this, which is be what we'd expect to see in R, but this doesn't actually exist. Uh, you would need... Um, the package called exponent M. So exponents for matrices. But, you know, while this is fine and dandy, we'll use, you know, just standard R for the time being. And so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to have V is going to be equal to V. And we're going to multiply this by P. And we're going to set it equal to V. So when we do this here, this is going to update V here and V is going to get updated to a new value and we're going to re-plug V back into here. And by multiplying this out multiple times, um, we're 
hypothesizing B will be the same, but basically this is the same as if, if we were to multiply this again and again and again, raising this to different powers. Okay, so when we first do this, we're gonna run through this and we get 0.22 and 0.78, okay? So I hopefully I'll run these again and they all change. And then I'll run them again and they'll change again. And hopefully they'll actually start converging to an actual value. Uh, to do this though, we're just gonna rerun this multiple times here. So I'll add a note at the end that you can loop these, but we're not gonna do that. So we run it again. And now we get 0 0.217, 0 0.783. Run it again, run it again. Let's run it a few more times. And as you can see here, it looks like, depending on the accuracy, basically at this run, it stops. So we started out here with 0 0.22 and 0 0.78. We ran it one, two, three, four, five, six times. And on the six times, the sixth time it converges and these values are gonna be the exact same moving forward here. So we've hit some sort of steady state. So kind of two takeaways here, right? In six times uh, we converged and the first takeaway, you know, we, we found a steady state. So we can say, yes, found steady state. This is a steady state matrix here. We're a steady state Markov, uh, which is kind of the solution here. And then two, you know, we, we found the actual solution without doing math, but sometimes you're in a bind, sometimes you need to automate things, sometimes the problems are difficult. And so doing this is kind of one way to do that. But anyways, these can be used in, in finance, in biology, as I mentioned. Uh, there's different probabilities of things happening, whether it's, you know, the market goes up, the market goes down, uh, whether there are multiple states within the market, whether you're in a boom cycle in the economy, whether you're in a, you know, a, I guess a bull market, a bear market. These things can have all kinds of interesting implications and stories behind them. They can be used all over in science as well. And we'll make one final note here. In practice here, if you're gonna actually do this, the above uh, code could be put into a loop. So I'm not manually running and running and running and hoping that six times works or just doing it manually and hoping I eventually hit something. Um, another kind of piece here though, is we could also store our V value here, which is what's kind of updating as we're updating this process. And we could plot this. So think about this nice curve. You'd start off with like some value and then it would go up or down and it would converge into some asymptote, meaning we would hit some steady state here. So anyways, that's a real world example of how you do that. <laughs> this is how you do addition, subtraction, uh, and some scalars here as well. You can do subtraction. I didn't do that here, but you can do subtraction of matrices as well. But those are the basic operations in R. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.